Hi again, guys, and welcome to another installment of the Beards and Cars podcast, which, of course, you can grab from the SoundCloud link down below if you want to listen to the audio-only version. And on this particular occasion, as you saw from the title, we've got another collab episode with a special guest. You know him from the channel, from Gran Turismo 1 Reviews. He's featured in this series as well. Ness. He is from my bedroom. And for this particular countdown... Again, as you'll have seen from the thumb, we're going to be counting down something which we have touched on before, usually on the prediction side of things, or some of the older games, Gran Turismo 2, for instance, our favorite tracks. This time, though, keeping it more up to date for the current Gran Turismo game, our top 10 favorite tracks purely in GT Sport, including all of the updates. And of course, we're going to go back and forth. Doubtless, there will be some crossover there, and there will be a combination of real world and fictional circuits. So first of all, in my number 10, I'm going with Goodwood Circuit. As I've said before on the channel, I'm not a huge fan of short circuits, generally speaking, but Goodwood for me just has a, a kind of charm to it. I like the hill climb. The circuit I was never as well versed with, but in the game, I think it's got a lot of charm. It's a great little clubman style circuit. Feels very authentic for the old school race cars like they would have at the Goodwood Revival, even in real life as well. For me, it's just one of those tracks that I've honestly never driven on it that much. It's just one of those tracks where I just feel like it's just uh, geared to just to one type of car there. And obviously, that's classic race cars like your Ferrari P4s and that such. But for me, it just never really got on to me. I, and the fact that it was also the only track, of, basically the only content of the update that was included just kind of threw me off a bit. But I could see why some people would like it. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a pretty unique update, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, next up on my list in number nine is actually the only rally circuit to feature on my list, which is currently the longest rally track we have in the game, and that is Fisherman's Ranch. One of the main reasons why I like it is just because of the length. Like I just said, I like longer circuits. You can get more of a, a technical proficiency with the lap when there's more to remember. And also the longer lap kind of reminds me a little bit more of a rally stage, like the kind of stuff that we'd see in, for instance, Gran Turismo 5 under the rally events section. And I kind of like that. It allows you to really open up a more powerful rally car, sometimes even a street car, if you want to take that there as well. So although it's not one of the tracks that I tend to use the most, it is definitely one of my favorites. I honestly kind of thought that you would forget about, about this track because it's just one of those tracks where you know you would like it, but it's just you would forget about it. But I did um, end up in my list as well. It, it, as you said, it's the longest and most fun rally track in sports. And I really like that huge jump near the end. I just really like those moments where it just makes the track a lot more memorable. Like those one specific moments of the track that's really that really uh that you really remember for what it offered and as you said it almost feels like a traditional rally course like you would see in like dirt rally or colin mccray or the wrc games and i and it's also for how varied the track is like there's a bunch of different types of sections that there's long sweeping sections but there's also a bunch of tight ones and there's a bunch of jumps I really like that track. I just wish we had a snow circuit to go along with it. Yeah, definitely. In fact, like a, a snow variation of the same track would be pretty cool as well. Next up, number eight on my list is an actual real circuit that I wasn't particularly versed with before this game, but it's kind of grown on me more and more over time, and it, it makes for great FIA events as well, and that is Inter Lagos. Very small, compact circuit. Kind of reminds me in some ways of even a track like Monaco in a weird kind of way, where it can be surprisingly difficult to overtake because of the really tight corners. A lap is still relatively quick, so it tends to be the sort of circuit that I will enjoy the most with like a Group 3 car rather than a prototype. You can't fully up and open up even a prototype on that track, apart from on the start-finish straights, which isn't all that long. It just feels pretty quick compared to the rest of the track. I think you can see why I decided to order this this way, because... Again, this is another track that's ended up on my list. Um, it is a very interesting track to me coming from the, from Brazil. It just one of those tracks that uh, you don't expect from the, that kind of country. It's the it was the only new real track at launch of GT Sports, and we had to wait until Catalonia came to help it stand out. Which I mean, which helped it stand out. Which, and that's just something that's really uh, I just. Uh, that just made me appreciate just from the start because first impressions to me are a huge deal. And I just like how it kind of 
feels like two different tracks in one, even though it's a short one. It starts off with some good length straights, like you can start with just a bunch of sweeping chords, but then halfway through the track, it challenge the challenges changes to slow moving bends, and that just uh, gives it a lot more uniqueness, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. And speaking, funnily enough, of Catalonia, that moves into the seventh spot for me, which is that exact track. It's a circuit which, in real life, I would probably not categorize as one of my favorites, but mostly thanks to Forza, where I first raced on it, I actually kind of liked it. I was surprised by how much I liked it, and even though I don't race on it that often, kind of like Fisherman's Ranch, it is a circuit that I do enjoy doing certain events on or using certain vehicles there. And like I said, not that often for me, but it is always kind of a special occasion. I think it suits, ironically, what I just said doesn't suit into Lagos as much, which is prototypes, formula level machines. They feel fantastic on that track. It's deceptive in, in a similar way, I would say, to Mategi. There's a lot of long straights and high speed sections, but also a lot of surprisingly tight corners as well. And it's all about those breaking points. I uh, didn't end up putting it on my list, but it would probably be in one of the honorable mentions of my list. It's just... Uh... A track that uh, I initially was really excited for because it was the first new real track ever since Inter Lagos. And it also helped out that it came in an update, which uh, is still one of my personal favorites because the 22B came back as well as some Super GTs. And also the return of Pagani and Maserati, two of your favorite manufacturers. <laughs> yeah, that was but, a good update. Yeah, it, it's just uh, it's a track that's... I. Over time, it's just kind of waned down a bit. I still really like the track. It's a fun circuit. It's just not one of my personal favorites. As far as my number six, I think it might surprise some people by how high it is on the list. It is another day one circuit, and it is a fictional track. And I would say, and I believe I've gone on record before, maybe even saying the same thing, it's my favorite fictional circuit to debut in GT Sport. And it's a track which I feature a lot on the channel in my tunes, and that is Dragon Trail, in particular Seaside. Not an overly long circuit, but in particular the clockwise variation, which I drive all of my tuned cars around. It just has a really nice test course kind of vibe, almost like the Top Gear track, for me at least, in the game. With a nice combination of tighter corners with some surprising high-speed sections, a very reminiscent end like Monaco with those square corners right to left to right, which you can weave through, or you can get it completely wrong and destroy an entire lap very easily. And I just like that. It's, it's a fun little circuit, which is actually more deceptively competitive than I think many people think uh, it Before can I move be. on, just so you know, if you hear a... Uh... I don't know if this happened in the recording sessions, but if you heard some sort of weird noise that just happened when you were talking, it's just my alarm for daily morning stuff. So just get that out of the way. Um, but um, as far as the track itself, I do have more fictional tracks in my list uh, than you, but even though it's not really that much, but um, Dragon Tail just didn't really do it for me. To be honest, it's just uh, the track just, I don't know. It felt like it didn't really offer that much to me. And I remember recently when I was trying to do the Hamilton uh, gold challenges, I had a lot of trouble with the chicane section. It honestly gave me as much trouble as the chicane section in Special Stage with 11 back in Gran Turismo 1, which I don't know. I don't think you uh, driven that much, but again, I'm still working on the uh, lap guy for that circuit. It's just, I don't know. I just, I understand why you like that track. It was just, it gave you a first impression and it's still the, the top gear test track basically of the channel. But to me, it just never really did it for me. It's fair enough. Yeah. And I think I'm probably more in the minority in liking that track so much. I don't hear a huge amount of love for it. So I think most people do tend to be on more your end of the argument, either indifferent or not really a fan of it. But yeah, as far as the next one, I'm returning back to the real world. Not a debut in this game, but certainly a very, very important track for a number of different motorsports, Suzuka. I absolutely love Suzuka. It's one of those tracks which I kind of began loving it more because I was faster than I felt like I was on that track. And I started to really come into my own, I think, in sport mode, where I was using the Beetle quite a lot and the Scirocco in those online events. I love Suzuka from the aspect of it almost feels like a, a fictional track. It feels like a track that was just made for Gran Turismo that wouldn't necessarily be real. It's got, I don't know, just that kind of vibe to me, but it's a great combination of really high-speed sections. It's got a great combination of really high-speed sections with some surprising technical corners, but 
it is, as I've said on the channel before, one of those kinds of tracks that I love because it has a lot of sweeping corners rather than like tight 90 degrees and city course kind of stuff. And it is a nostalgic track for me. It's uh, it is something that I got better as time goes on, but it just feels like a bit of a draining track to me because it feels more narrow than it actually is. Like some, like in the uh, east section, you could say the weaving section. It just felt like it was. You have to be a little bit more different to overtake opponents. I mean, it is. It's still a fun track to me. I really like the track and. To be honest, my favorite version of Suzuka has only been featured in Grand Turismo 4 and more predominantly in Forza, and that's the West version. I don't know why. I just like the uh, different variations of the circuits, like how much the different variations of the corners instead of just the sweeping S's that the East circuit offers, even though it is by far the most popular circuit for uh, drift videos, as you've seen from the uh, Community Spotlight. Yeah, I do kind of miss that variation of the track as well. I remember it in the older the older Forza games where, if I recall correctly, instead of making that long sweeping left towards the finish line section, you'd have like a sudden dead hand, like 90 degree right instead. It's a deceptive corner, I'll be honest. Even when whenever I was playing the Forza games uh, recently, just I was shocked by how hard it was to do that uh, corner uh, effectively. It almost kind of reminded me of that... I don't know if you remember this, but it was kind of remind me of that uh, Camaro license test back in Gran Turismo 2, where there was that blind circuit that um, you had to basically figure out how to weave your way through the corner. And it was very hard to figure out where your car needed to be because there was a giant wall blocking it. Uh, it kind of reminded me of that. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think Suzuka is probably one of the ones on the list which tends to be the most popular with the community as well. I know a lot of people have a lot of love for Suzuka. And like you said, with the drifting, it is a very versatile track as well. You can race anything from N100s all the way up to open wheel formulas, drifting. It's a very versatile track, obviously great for GT500s as well. As far as the next one on my list, moving into fourth now, a track which has always been controversial. A lot of people actually did not like the fact that they brought it back. I specifically said I did not think they would bring it back in GT Sport because it didn't suit the style of the game. By far the track that I've done the most miles on, I believe somewhere in the region of 170 to 180,000 miles on GT6, Route X, the track which built the channel. Not exactly the most challenging track for cornering, but a, a track where you will more often than any other circuit in the game see like a full 16 to 20 car grid all finishing within like two seconds of each other. And that kind of closeness typically wouldn't happen even like a Formula um, event. As I mentioned in the beginning, I don't know if, I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning, but I placed a restriction on my list where I can only include five circuits that uh, have debuted in GT Sport and five circuits that are returning. I specifically left that out the list because um, there are, I do have five of each variations. And as a result, uh, Special stage with X was cut off the list. It would probably still make the list if it if I didn't put that restriction. But I was it was by far the most the weirdest track to come back to GT Sport. I just feel like it was more so for the testing of how quick your car can be, and also to please the lobby people like you. Just uh that high speed 270 mile per hour racing with with ferrari enzos pagani huayras 4gts and even some vision gt cars like the alpine the hyundai the bugatti that kind of stuff it is definitely a track that i appreciate of them returning and it is a very cool track it made me appreciate it more in this game but it's just uh didn't really it's just it's a good track and i find it really weird and cool that the replays of that track is pretty much stripped out from gt6 like if you go back and play do some replays of gt5 i mean no yeah gt6 and gt Sport compared to other tracks it's virtually identical with some changes but yeah it's very cool that they added it back 
Oh, for sure. And I totally get why a lot of people aren't a fan of the track. It tends to be a similar kind of opinion that I think most people don't like NASCAR for, where it's just constant right turning, constant left turning. It's all about just which car has the most power. And even though there's a lot more to it than that, I understand the reasoning. And I think it would be kind of cool. And I know a number of people have said that they loved or they would love to drive on the other sections of that track, the kind of smaller outer rings. And it would be a cool location, I think, to have almost like what they did with in real life, the Daytona circuit, where the road course kind of goes within the loop. I think what, that would have been cool if they redesigned Route X to have like an in, I can't recall what it's called, but like an in road course or an in ring, but uh, like a, a special stage Route 7 or special stage Route 11 kind of vibe, but made out of special stage Route X to make it not just a high speed track, but almost like a a spiritual successor to a, a complex string or something like that. As far as the top three now on my list, we're moving into another real world track, the most significant real track to arrive in the game recently, that's for sure, Laguna Seca. I mean, Laguna Seca is a track which I don't think many people dislike. Most people either find it maybe a bit challenging, and that's probably why it's not one of their favorites, or absolutely love it. I haven't heard much hate for Laguna Seca. It's such an iconic track easily one of the probably top five most iconic of the whole series not just Gran Turismo but Forza as well you can have fantastic battles with friends there and I love the fact that even though I'm not usually a fan of shorter circuits because a minute and a half to two minutes in a slower car doesn't seem that great but at the same time because of how challenging and how densely compact that track is with so many challenging corners close together in quick succession it makes the track feel bigger and more challenging than it actually yeah, is i think you could of tell course, by the, the fact that i did a patreon well. video specifically uh comparing that track from gt2 to gt sport that i also love this track so much it's by far the most nostalgic track in sport and that is something that which i was hoping that we would get i wasn't really expecting cars like as nostalgic tracks to come back like Grand Valley or midfield, but Laguna Seca had the highest chance. And even then I didn't, what I wasn't really that confident in it coming back, but seeing it come back and not only that, but in a different variation, uh, weather tech, it really, uh, caught my attention. And I really was really glad that they caught it, got, brought it back, even though we had to wait an extra month when the PlayStation blogs told us it would arrive in <laughs> later of November. And that really pissed me <laughs> off. And for some reason, they just keep getting a bigger low, but that's a topic for another <laughs> for day. Sure, yeah. And as the, as I mentioned, as mentioned in your lap guide, it had the same spirit as Nürburgring. It's bats and uh, Bathurst are probably the two real world circuits that are the most like short Nürburgring very versions. Like it's just one of those tracks that are, puts you in a very uh mindful set and making sure that you keep your focus on the track and just making sure that you don't run into the walls or in the sand it came with circuit experience in the same update igniting my spirit to get better at the game with the viper no less and that just uh that was really cool to see you don't really see certain experience tracks to come back I mean, certain experience to come with the same update. It's usually the update after, unless it's Root X, which, what's the point? Unless it's a Skyline script stream. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I always wanted an American track to come back after so many European and Japanese and fictional ones came to the game. Like, if like there's so many American tracks that's really uh, has the potential to come, like Sebring, Road Atlanta, uh the return of Infineon. I was wanting those types of tracks to come back and see, to see Laguna Seca come back, just it's easily one of my favorites in the game. And also the setting it in sunset gives me GT3 flashbacks. It is the kind of track which uh, I definitely wouldn't mind having like a, a full on nighttime variation of. I think that could be pretty challenging in a similar way to Bathurst or, or Mount Panorama with the, the lack of lighting on the track. I think it could, make it, it could make it a challenge. And to the point of what you said about them feeling like the Nürburgring, I think one of the best things about both Bathurst and Laguna Seca that make them feel so similar is just the massive elevation change that both tracks have in such a short time. And not really many racetracks have those kind of crazy elevations. Most 
try at least to be really flat. I mean, perfect example is Sebring, one of the flattest tracks I've ever seen. And it's great, but you would never accuse it of having anything like a Nürburgring vibe, that's for sure. And I do love that about Laguna Seca as well. Speaking of the Nürburgring, though, that brings me to my number two. In particular, always very specifically for me, the Nordschleife. I have made it probably public a number of times. I'm not a fan at all of the GP course, and by definition, not a huge fan of the 24-hour course because it includes that. For me, just the pure Nordschleife, it's it's the benchmark track for me. It's the track where you can really self-evaluate if your skills are improving over time because there's such a combination of corner types, high-speed sections, low speeds, one of the only tracks to have carousels. It's just such an iconic track, not just of the series, which ironically hasn't actually been in the series for as long as many of these others have you know Gran Turismo 4 I believe was the first time it was included and yet people just loved it immediately because it's got so much history behind it I also really love the Nürburgring and it's long very technical it's fun for pretty much every type of vehicle N100 N400 maybe even N1000 and especially race cars group 4 group 2 the classic uh race cars it's very iconic like as you said it's arguably the most iconic circuits in the world potentially it's and you can pretty much do every type of racing on this track you can do lap days you can do circuit racing drifting and even on several occasions mission 34 recreations i love the nurburgring and yeah i also agree and i definitely prefer the north cipher and finally as probably nobody will be surprised by the only track that could be ever above the Nürburgring for me in real life and in Forza and in Gran Turismo and pretty much any other game that will feature it. Of course, La Sarte, home of the 24 hour of Le Mans. I love Le Mans. I love, I always refer to it just as Le Mans for the sake of simplicity. I'm a massive fan of the Bugatti circuit, which unfortunately Gran Turismo doesn't show much love for, but Forza did for a little while. Very challenging little track in its own way. The main course, though, either with or without the chicanes, it's just, it's a gorgeous circuit to me. I love the fact that it's like half road course, half race course, similarly to Bathurst in that way. It's got some elevation change, but not all that much. And it's got this this vibe of just oozing with history. You can feel all of the cars, all of the winners, all of the races that have gone before you every time you go there. Fantastic straight section. But unlike Route X, Even the straights without the chicanes require so much more focus and skill, especially in something like a prototype where you're bouncing all over the road because of the camber of the street. Fantastic circuit for endurance racing, of course, because that's the whole point. And I love the fact that half of the track is just pure power and half the track is much more technical, meaning that in a similar way to the Nürburgring, you can't rely on one type of car. You've got to have a vehicle that's pretty much good at everything. If it's just fast in a straight line, you'll probably lose. If it's just good through corners, you'll probably lose as well. It also it also shouldn't come a surprise to many people that Alon did come up to my list. What may surprise you, however is that it's not as high on my list as you might expect. I I still love the track so much. It's iconic, of course. And at the launch of the game, it was the most highly requested track to come back. And for good reason. Like, it was pretty much made for GT Sport. Like, you can just do a bunch of Group 3 and Group 1 racing on that track, and it makes perfect sense. I also like that they kept the No Chicane version because I don't know if you noticed, but... In Gran Turismo 6, they updated Le Mans yet again in the with the 2013 variation, and that only came with the standard uh, chicane versions. And we, if you wanted to drive on the um, no chicane ones, you had to go to either the 2009 or 2005 variations, which meant that the graphics weren't as polished. So I really like that they kept that no chicane version. However, the reason why I'm not as big of a fan of this track as in previous GT games, because I do love this track more in G- previous ones than this one, is because I only find it very fun with race cars now. When it comes to every most of the other uh, real-world race tracks, I get this sense that you could pretty much do track days with this uh, with this circuit. Like Monza, I once saw Alexis LFA drive, drive on it. Uh, the Nürburgring is obviously the biggest exp- example. A lot of tra- cars uh, made have a Nürburgring pra- package because they were trying focused solely on this track, must to the dismay of James May, but that's beside the point. But with Le Mans, I don't know. I just feel like it's 
I just feel like when I drive it on the road with a road car, it just it just doesn't feel as fun as it was in uh, previous GT games. And I feel like part of the reason why is because GT Sport is much more FIA. Um, it's much more FIA integrated. I still find it extremely fun with race cars, but for whatever reason, when it came to the road cars, it just I just don't find as much fun of it. But even so, I still love the track. Yeah, and that's it for my top 10. So now over to you with some of the tracks that you've had on your list that I didn't include. Okay, I I ended up with more uh, tracks that ended up on your list than others. So I'm looking at my list. Uh, yeah, I only need to talk about half the tracks on my list. So number 10 is Fisherman Rants, as we already mentioned. And I'm just so you know, I'm just going to skim over a bunch of tracks that we... Uh, already talked about uh number nine for me is a track that's exclusive to my list and i don't expect that to be on the um other list even though that's pretty much the point of this list and that is monza still my favorite update of gt spark which is 1.11 and if you know me for quite a while you probably know why and if for some reason you don't dodge viper gts <laughs> <laughs> of course there's more reason to that but Monza, it's just, it was the first track that was added where I can relax my brain for the most part while driving because pretty much every other track in the uh, launch of the game required so much uh, concentration to get good at. And even though that was all very fine for FIA racing, when it came to um, just relaxing your brain for uh, just making sure that you do the track as efficient as possible. Mon Monza was pretty much the first track that had that sort of vibe. There was a bunch of long straights. But even at the same time, it still requires many preparation for slow moving car corners, as well uh, as the famous Ascari corner. I just really like the challenge that Monza gave off. It's just a track that which which um, demands much of the... Uh, much... Uh, it's a course which demands much preparation for braking because if you don't know the braking corners, it can screw you up big time. But at the same time, it's a track which really suits me and it's a track which grew on me in GT Sport. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely a huge amount of love for Monza. It's one of those tracks which I'm... I think I've always been one of the more outlying people on it where I'm not that hot on it. I've actually been racing on it a lot recently in Ride 2 with motorbikes instead of cars trying to complete all of the circuit uh, events. And it's a great track with bikes as well. So it's always cool when you have a circuit that can transition not just to cars, but be really fun on two wheels as well as four. And as you were saying that then about the, the composition of the track and having the right braking points and all that kind of stuff, it actually made me think that although I haven't, imagine this before it almost feels to me like a slightly scaled down version of road america a very similar kind of vibe to me between monza and road america interesting so uh number eight and number seven are both uh already mentioned i didn't expect you to talk about inter Lagos, but that is my uh, number eight and as i mentioned le mans is a lot more down than usual so that would be number seven that would be so and the next four tracks on my list uh hasn't been featured on the hsg countdown so number six for me is a track which i initially was kind of lukewarm towards of it coming because uh it was another fictional track that came to the game and towards the start of the uh the update craze there was a bunch of disdain whenever uh tracks like that came like the infield versions of blue moon bay or the extra variations of uh lake majore but over time, it really grew on me, and to the point where it may even be one of my new favorite city tracks in GT Sport, and that is Tokyo South Variation. That may surprise you, because most people would probably choose Tokyo Central, the one with the large strike, which, for obvious reasons, it was the first track to include that very long strike, but what was, re what, what was originally a unique aspect to that track? Was is no longer unique. You now have Le Mans, you now have Monza, and you even now have the pretty much the poster boy of long straights, special stage route 11. So that track just kind of dwindled for me. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not really a huge fan of the other half of the track, which has a bunch of sweeping corners. That just didn't really do it for me. But South feels much more like the older special stage route tracks than the other variations. It just has that sort of 
classic track vibe that the others didn't bring to the table. In particular, I love how the pit stop area is halfway from the start li starting line and you enter it in the same entrance in both forwards and reverse. That is something that's very unique to the circuit. And of course, there are a couple of tracks that has that can also have the uh, pit stop in, in different spots. Like, for example, in the past of the franchise, there was El Capitan. I No, not El Capitan. Uh, what was that track called? Uh, the one which all was in Gran Turismo 5 and had was both a road and a race version. Basically, that uh, track had the very long pit stop, which went on into this sort of camp variation. And in Forza and other tracks, the Nürburgring uh, starts in the straight section before going to the pit stop. But Tokyo South is much more unique in that aspect. The last corner in the Forza version is both hilarious to see someone fail, as is the case with the Pontiac Firebird review, and gives all the great sense of strategy and tuning because you need to figure out, do I put in this much amount of dampers or... Like, the more dampers you have, the better you are at the cornering, but the less dampers you have, the less likely you are to t tumble over and crash your car. But yeah, Tokyo South, it really grew on me, and I it's easily one of my new favorite tracks. Yeah, for sure. I think I actually agree with everything you said about Tokyo in this game, to be honest. The, the longer straight variation was purely a track I used just for that on those original drag setups. And then once the other tracks were added, like you said, became kind of unnecessary for me. I like that version as well, the most, I think, especially on a, a nighttime setting. It seems somehow appropriate to race on Tokyo at night. So number five for me, this is the highest rated fictional circuit of the whole list for me. It's my favorite fictional circuit in GT Sport is Lake Maggiore. Lake Maggiore is the fictional circuit in sport that has the biggest Gran Turismo track field to me. This Lake Maggiore is to GT Sports what uh, Grand Valley was to the previous GT games. It has a couple of hairpin corners, a couple of sweeping corners, and there was a lot of fun moments with the highlight being the dip down into the angle straight. That's I love that section, and it's a great circuit for fast cars like Prototype or Super GT, and it is very long. It has corners of all types, like I mentioned, hairpins, sweeping corners, that's a uh, dip into the angled right. And as a bonus, it took that it's the track that took me the least amount of time to gold Hamilton challenges because I like this track a lot. The only other track that I didn't have much trouble with was Brands Hatch, but that's only because uh, the Air and Santa challenges from GT6 uh, kind of gave me the boost. Yeah, the uh, Majore was uh, a closer mission for me. I, I was going to put it on the list, but not quite, but... I definitely agree with what you said about it being like a, a Grand Valley for this generation. It, it definitely has the kind of vibe that I could imagine that being in an older game, probably with different graphics. Maybe even the surrounding area of the track would look a bit different. In there with stuff like Trial Mountains and Deep Forests and Grand Valleys. It, it does definitely have an, a more old school vibe, but kind of infused with that FIA, more realistic slant that a lot of the fictional tracks have now. So yeah, yeah, that was a difficult one to take off the list. For okay, me. number four on my list was was also added uh, in 2018 in the later portion, and that was a track that featured more Porsches and a couple of others, such as the Alpha TZ2, Fuji Speedway. Initially, I wasn't a big fan of this track back in GT4, but that's only because I love the 90s version a lot more, the one that's uh, had the much more rounded uh, corners. And to be honest, that was mostly because it was the easiest track in GT4 to cheat on. Because what's stopping you? Like, you could just turn right of that uh, corner near the end and then just cut through the grass to cut a huge section of the track. There was nothing stopping you unless you were doing that uh, one license test. But over time, Fuji Speedway has really grown on me. And ever since uh, Super GT came back, I really wanted this track to be added so that we could have more super gt fun so with the track coming back it became my new favorite laid back track with the long straights and not many corners and for me personally this was my go-to track for giving my opinions of a car in terms of fun factor when ordering my favorite cars in gt sports and it's also very deceptive in certain corners such as the bottom left section with the changes uh depending on which variation you choose but yeah, I I am a big fan of Fuji Speedway, and 
it's definitely grown on me. Uh, I think Fuji for me has been hurt a little bit in this game for a similar reason to what you mentioned about Gran Turismo 4, wherein what we used to do to the AI, a lot of people do now for real in the online lobbies, just cutting corners, and people seem to have a, a strangely cheating mindset whenever I go on that track. They seem to suddenly become like stock car drivers for some weird reason, even if they're good drivers on other tracks, just breaking, using each other's back bumper and bouncing each other off the track and cutting corners. It seems to have a weird effect on people in that kind of way, but it will always be special to me because of purely the Nissan R9 2 CP's victory there and setting that crazy speed. On for the sure. Um, and the last card that I'll be talking about in death, uh, number three on my list, I did not expect you to put this on the list and of course you didn't because it just it was one it's the last um it was pretty much uh the track which really shocked everyone nobody expected this track to come to gt sports because nobody really heard of it unless you played that one need for speed game but as soon as i uh drove on it i instantly fell in love with it autopolis I, as i said uh part of the reason why i love this track is pretty much for a similar reason why a lot of my a lot of the cars that I love were added because I guess the Mercedes 300 SCL I never heard of the, never really took notice of that track car or track before but once I tried it out I it just really grew on me it has a very pleasing look like as you mentioned in that uh, circuit guide it has a very classic circuit feel because it's very green it has there's a lot of green on this circuit and a lot of blue in the sky and I just has a very pleasing aesthetics for me it has a fantastic mix of throttle control and fun to drive through corners like i love the the long turn to the left that immediately goes over to the large hairpin and i love immediately after that there's the one that you kind of have to treat as one corner even though it's technically two or three and for me if fuji speedway was the track for testing my how much i love cars and gg sport this was my code to track for basically my uh for testing lap times in particular and 400 cars and i found out how much a big a disparity the end classes are and how flawed the circuit is because the fastest car on my list as far as i can tell was the gt40 road car and that did a 154 i believe and the slowest car was the dodge challenger which was a 205 that's not even close so for reasons such as that and just the unexpected uh addition and just the pleasing expense it easily became one of my favorite new circuits and i definitely hope that they keep this one for future gt games i hope they do as well actually autopolis was a an interesting track for or not an interesting track it was a difficult track for me to omit from the list as well because i did strongly consider it and i could probably talk myself into featuring it in the top 10 instead of something else and I love the fact that they added it with, if I recall correctly, the Super Formula cars at the same time, because, of course, they race there, so why not? And, yeah, it's a track which it looks and initially feels like it should only be some little clubman circuit, like for tiny little hatchbacks and K cars, but it does a fantastic job of really feeling like a an appropriate place to take really big, powerful cars like Formula cars and still have great races there, despite the fact that it looks like it would be impossible to overtake but it's a great little track. Yeah, for sure. And just for clarification, um, the Super Formula Cars was added in the update after, even though it was in the second March update. So uh, yeah. it's still technically the same uh, month, but yeah. And as I mentioned, uh, number two and number one for me were both already discussed tracks. Laguna Seca for number two and Nürburgring for number one for me. Those are my two favorite circuits, and that's pretty much it for my list. Pretty cool. So we did have, not too surprisingly, a lot of crossover in terms of the content, not so much in terms of the actual ordering. I think the only one that we both had exactly the same was into Lagos at number eight. And then obviously the Nubug Ring, pretty close between both of us, number one for you, number two for me. So yeah, pretty cool list, uh, a good combination of real and fictional as well. And that's always been one of the best things, I think, about Gran Turismo, having legitimate real circuits and completely fictionalized ones that can actually be, in terms of fandom, on par with each other. Because you could easily make a, a fictional track that's just pathetic and too boring compared to these real iconic circuits. But for many people, the stuff that they're you know asking for now 
even includes those fictional tracks, like the amount of people asking for Deep Forest to come back and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it was a great list to go through in a similar way to uh, some of the other countdowns that we've done, even for older Gran Turismo games, and doubtless will feature probably some other uh, category in Gran Turismo in the future, be it circuits, cars, whatever the case may be. So I want to thank Ness for coming on as a guest again. We will, of course, be doing more guest episodes in the future with Ness and other members of the team as well. But for now... And this is Ness Pajama saying, Fluffy Pillows. Thanks for watching.